Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar today. Uh, my name is Brant Kasbaum, sales engineer here at ACI. And today we're continuing with our educational webinar series discussing our NIST certification process. Before we get started, a couple of housekeeping items today. Uh, there's a chat box over here on the lower left hand corner of the screen. Uh, feel free to submit any questions and we will do a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Expect uh, me to talk here for about 12, 10 to 12 minutes or so, and then we'll move into a Q&A session. So feel free to submit any of your questions down below. The topics that we're gonna discuss today are the NIST certification process. And we're gonna start with what is NIST, and then move on to how a sensor becomes NIST certified, talk about specific applications that require or commonly require NIST certification. We'll go through the specific products that ACI manufactures in which we can include NIST cert certificates and some of the products that we can't. We'll also talk about recalibration and recertification requirements and then conclude with a live Q&A session. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, the NIST stands for the National Institute of Standards and Technology. It's a non-regulatory agency of the U.S. government whose purpose is to promote innovation and competitiveness in the U.S. and worldwide uh, by conducting research that advances measurement science and they set standards uh, for, for measurement technology. They establish standards known as standard reference materials and they provide testing services for manufacturers and labs to ensure that the materials or the equipment being used to test and calibrate devices uh, are accurate and meet these set standards. A sensor is certified or considered NIST certified when it is tested and calibrated against these set NIST standards, these SRMs, and the equipment being used can be traced back to these uh, specific standards. So that's what is meant by an NIST traceable calibration certificate. That's the official title uh, for the documentation that, that we can provide. And that simply means that the equipment that we use to test and calibrate uh, our sensors can be traced back to a specific NIST standard or, or reference material, that SRM. So, and that's, the, that's what the documentation will show. It will show the specific testing equipment, the model number, the serial number, and, uh, and when that equipment was tested and certified to that standard. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the future when we show in a, a sample of our NIST certificates and what you would get when you request an NIST certificate. The specific equipment that we use here at ACI uh, to test and certify our products is uh, certified to the, the ISO standard that you see uh, over here. This is a, a standard requirement that is used by ISO for testing and calibration laboratories uh, worldwide. This standard is used in, in most countries um, as a baseline for technical competence. So in, in a lot of cases, specific suppliers, uh, government agencies, regulatory, regulatory authorities will require that devices and labs, the equipment used by these labs that, or manufacturers meet this specific requirement. And they won't accept any testing or calibration results if that lab is not tied back to that specific, this specific ISO standard. There are several reasons why uh, certain sensors or certain applications will be required to have NIST certification. One of those is that uh, a higher accuracy or, or better a better level of control is required. We most commonly see NIST certificates required uh, on uh, demanding or critical applications, and that NIST certificate gives you the documentation that can prove that the specific device is tested and calibrated and meets that accuracy that is required. Oftentimes, uh, engineers will uh, require or specify that NIST certified units are uh, to be used on uh, the scope of a project. Uh, also, 
not only the initial testing and calibration, but frequent recalibration or recertification can ensure that there's a long-term reliability of your system. And so we see applications, and we'll talk about that in a minute when we discuss uh, the recertification or recalibration process. There are also health and safety applications that require a, a very high level of accuracy. And so the NIST certification process allows you again to prove that the devices that you are installing meet or exceed the stated accuracy that is required uh, for your specific application. The most common applications that we see uh, NIST uh, certified sensors are, are in pharmaceutical labs um, and pharmaceutical manufacturing. Low temperature, freezer and refrigerator uh, storage and monitoring where very tight tolerances are required. We see it also in large uh, storage facilities, and warehouses, hospitals and clean rooms, data centers, and also uh, for process uh, control and manufacturing environments as well. The specific products that we manufacture here at ACI that are available with NIST certificates include our pressure, temperature, and humidity sensors. And we'll go through each of these categories, uh, let you know what the, how to order a sensor with NIST certs, and what you're actually getting and what the actual certificates look like. Now, I understand that some of the uh, part numbering and some of the ordering processes uh, for each of these product categories are different and they can be a little bit confusing. Uh, that's why we're here to help any of the sales engineers at ACI as well as our technical support team are happy to help you build a part number and uh, ensure, to ensure that you're getting the proper documentation that you need uh, when placing an order uh, for any of our sensors. So the first thing I'm going to show is what a sample uh, certificate looks like. This is the, the top portion of a temperature transmitter uh, NIST certificate. And so what, what you're getting here is each individual product when uh, NIST certificate is ordered with it, each individual product is then serialized and we document the date that it was tested and then down below which you don't see down here which i'll show on another cert is the actual test results and we list the specific equipment that is used the model numbers serial numbers of that specific equipment and now this is the equipment that is tested and calibrated to nist standards and that's what makes these traceable back to those nist standards and then it also shows the last time that this equipment was tested and calibrated, and then when it's due for additional testing, retesting, or recalibration. I'll point out here, oftentimes we get a question that about this calibration due date. This is the due date or when we will have the equipment that is testing these sensors recalibration or recalibrated. That this does not mean that this is the date that the specific sensor, the specific part number is required for retesting or recalibration. So we list all of the devices that will be used to test and calibrate these sensors. So for this particular uh, item, there were five different devices used in the testing and calibration process. For some other products, there, there might be fewer or more. So we often get that question where, say, for example, there's only one device used to test or calibrate a certain sensor. People will see this calibration due date and assume that that is when this specific sensor is required for recalibration. And that's not the case. This is when this our test equipment is required for recalibration. Specific pressure sensors that we can provide with NIST certificates include our DLP series, and we can provide certs, NIST certs for our 0.25% accuracy model. The, and to order a cert with these sensors, you add a dash 3P for a three point cert or a dash 5P for a five point cert to the end of the part number. Uh, uh, the difference between a three point and a five point cert is quite simply, the three point cert is tested at three different points along its range and the five point cert is tested along five points along that range. So if you were to order a zero to one inch pressure transducer, the three point cert would be tested at 0 0.1 inch, 0 0.5 and 0 0.9 inches. 
One note I would like to highlight regarding this DLP transducer specifically, and uh, also applies to our humidity sensors, is that this device, the DLP series, has selectable ranges and selectable outputs. So when you order the 0.25% accuracy device, you're selecting a specific range and a specific output, and it's that specific range and that specific output at which we test an NIST certified. So for example, if you order a uh, device that's uh, say zero to five inches and four to 20 milliamps, the documentation will show that the testing is from zero to five inches and four to 20 milliamps. You, can, you do have the ability to change that range and change that output, but that original cert will only apply to that specific range and output that you requested when these were originally ordered. Our NLP2 series differential pressure transducers are also available with NIST certs. Ordering process is the same as the DLP. You add a dash 3B or a dash 5P to the end of the part number uh, to get the required cert points for that device. Here's what a, uh, a pressure transducer cert will look like. And you can see this specific one was a uh, 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 plus or minus 0 0.25 inch and a 0 to 10 volt output. So you can see that the, the cert shows the, the voltage readings and uh, compares that to the um, inches readings and that it falls within the stated accuracy specifications. Our humidity sensors are also available with NIST certs in three and five points. Uh, the most applicate or most configurations are available with uh, NIST certs, including room, duct, outside, remote probes, and, and stainless plates. For our humidity sensors to get a cert, you add a second line item uh, to, to your order. So for example, if you need a 2% accuracy duct humidity sensor, you would specify the part number for the sensor slash RH2-D, and then you would add a second line item for NIST RH cert, either three or five points. By default, if the number of points, test points aren't specified, uh, we would default to a three point cert for our humidity sensors. One, one thing I will point out, uh, I mentioned, I should have mentioned it with the pressure. These are the default uh, testing points uh, for our humidity sensors. Uh, so if you order a three point cert, they're going to be tested at 20, 50, and 80% humidity. You can specify, if required, uh, different test points. So I actually just had one of these this morning. A customer is operating between 40 and 60% humidity. So they wanted test points to fall within that specific range. So we did a five point cert where they're being tested at 40, 45, 50, 55, and 60% humidity. So these are the default uh, test points and you can specify ranges or you can test, specify uh, test points other than these if, as required. Here's an example of what our humidity cert looks like. Uh, where you, again, you can see the specific uh, information listed and the specific date on which these were certified. For our resistive temperature sensors, the default is a single point cert, so that's a one point, and you include these by adding a dash NIST to the standard part number. So we can cert pretty much any temperature sensor that we manufacture limited only by the uh, physical size of the sensor compared to the size of the testing chambers that, that we have. So pretty much any type of sensor can be certified by simply adding a dash NIST to the end of the part number. And there's an example of what a standard thermistor uh, NIST cert will look like. Our temperature transmitters, our analog output temperature sensors, uh, have a little bit of a different process for ordering these with the uh, NIST certs. Uh, in this case, you would use a different part number that begins with A slash TTM. And so by specifying the M in the part number, that gives you the uh, a three point cert by default. A five point cert is also available uh, by adding a second line item uh, to your order for whichever parts need to be uh, NIST certified. And here again is an example of what our temperature transmitter certificates look like. For combination units for temperature and humidity, uh, to, you have to specify which uh, sensor, whether it's the temp or humidity or both, that you need to be uh, uh, 
provided with an NIST certificate. To include the temperature certificate, you would add a dash NIST to the end of the part number. So for example, this part number is a 2% humidity with a 10K type 2 thermistor in our Aries style room housing. And so by adding dash NIST, that will give you the cert for the temperature sensor. And then for the humidity sensor, you would add a, a second line item uh, for the uh, humidity sensor NIST certificate. The reason why the, the part numbers are different for the different cer certificates, whether it's temp or pressure or humidity, is that the certification process is different for each of these product categories. And for some, for some parts, we need to know whether it, they're going to be certified early on in the manufacturing process. And then for other parts, we're not, we don't need to know that they need to be certified, you know, until the end of the process. You know, for example, uh, we're certifying finished product versus certifying, you know, the board or the, the, the sensor element. So the, the, again, though, I understand that the part numbers are, uh, can be a bit confusing. This is something that we get questions about regularly, but we're very happy to help either by phone, by email, or by using the live chat feature on our website. Certainly happy to help build you and get you the right part number that, uh, that is needed for your applications. Another common question that we get regularly is how often should sensors be recalibrated or recertified? Now, NIST themselves do not give any requirements or recommendations about how often devices need to be retested, recalibrated, recertified. So by default, we, we put that back on the specific application and the specific job requirements. So we do see certain requirements um, that are built into the job for frequent or periodic recalibration, whether that's every six months, every year, every two years. There are certain regulatory bodies that may require more frequent uh, recalibration or recertifications, or certain applications that uh, um, are more demanding or, or uh, uh, more critical that will require frequent uh, recalibrations. For example, we have a customer that uses uh, some of our temperature transmitters um, to monitor BTUs. So they're measuring water flowing in and out of a building and they use that for billing purposes. And so those are sent back to us every six months for recalibration because they're being used specifically for, for billing purposes. We do offer that service to recalibrate and recertify uh, any sensor that uh, was originally provided with an NIST certificate. By, you know, if, if there's no specific job requirements, we, we would recommend, you know, a yearly recertification as a, as a general rule of thumb, um, but it is always best to follow a specific uh, a job requirement or, or local code or a, a specific uh, um, requirement or application uh, requirement, easy for me to say. So we, when you want to send a device back for recertification or, or recalibration, uh, please reach out to us. We'll provide you with a return authorization for that device to be sent back to us. And the turnaround time once we receive the device is usually within a couple of days that we get it retested, recertified, and provided with a current or up-to-date documentation and shipped back to you. That concludes the webinar or the uh, uh, presentation portion of our webinar today. You see my contact information on your screen. I'm happy to help with any additional questions at, at any time. So if you're watching this in the future, not live, uh, I'll be happy to answer any specific questions that, uh, that you may have. And we will move on to the Q&A portion of our website. So I will find uh, a couple of questions that I saw were submitted. Uh, the first one from Tony Davis is, we received an order and now the customer is requiring NIST certificates, what can we do? There are certain products that we do have the ability to provide the documentation after the fact. That's limited to our humidity sensors. All of our humidity sensors are tested and calibrated in NIST uh, chambers. Uh, so we do keep that documentation on file. However, for our pressure and for our temperature sensors, those are not tested or calibrated in the specific NIST chambers unless required or unless ordered specifically that way. So in those cases, those units would have to be sent back to us for retesting and recertification. 
but our humidity, we do have that documentation that can be provided after the fact. Another question is, can you provide calibration documents for the parts not discussed today? Uh, good question, thank you. Um, so we talked about our pressure, our temperature, and our humidity sensors. Uh, we do have other product lines, uh, specifically gas and current sensors that um, are not able to be NIST certified. And that's because there are too many variables that can affect specifically gas sensors. There are too many variables that can affect the operation and calibration of those devices. So for example, CO2 sensors can be affected by temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and elevation. So, and there's no standard way to test or cali calibrate those to a specific standard. So in those cases for those uh, sensors that aren't able to be NIST certified, we do have what we call a certificate of conformance. It's documentation that we can provide with these sensors that essentially states that at such and such date, at such and such time, these sensors were tested and calibrated and they fall within our stated accuracy specifications and they conform to our internal quality standards. We are an ISO registered uh, manufacturer, and so this certificate of conformance would indicate that these sensors passed our testing, they were calibrated here at the factory, and they do meet the stated accuracy specifications, and they do fall within our own internal quality requirements. In, in most applications, that does suffice uh, for enough documentation uh, to prove that the, the parts were calibrated at the factory and do meet or exceed the state of accuracy specifications. Another question is, at the moment of placing an order with NIST certificates, what time does it take against a normal order for delivery? Good question. Usually the NIST testing process does add uh, some time. Usually it's uh, two to three days, uh, depending on um, our current volume of orders and um, our chamber space. You know, we do have numerous uh, NIST testing chambers, but you know, they are limited to a certain amount of capacity. So generally that the additional lead time is two to three days. However, for more specific information, feel free to call us uh, when you're ready to place an order and we can tell you exactly what the, you know, what the lead time is based on what our current order volume uh, at that specific time is. There's a couple other questions here. There were some questions that were emailed in uh, before that people wanted to see addressed. One of those questions is, I got certificates from another vendor. How do I know if that certificate is NIST or not? Good question. I'm gonna scroll back through the presentation here to what our certificates look like. And I'm going to show you uh, our humidity certificate here. Well, our certificate says NIST right on it, and it lists the specific equipment that we used, the model and serial numbers that this testing equipment is used. So there's confusion out there in the industry, and people use different terminology. So if you've received a certificate that doesn't say NIST on it and doesn't list the specific testing equipment's information, then it's very likely that that certificate is not, or that device that you have is not traceable back to a, an NIST standard. What you probably have is uh, what we would call a certificate of conformance, then um, other, other companies might call that a calibration certificate or a calibration verification. But in all likelihood, if it doesn't say NIST on it, and it doesn't list the specific calibration uh, equipment's information, it, in all likelihood that uh, device you have is not traceable to a, a specific NIST standard. Another question uh, that uh, just came in a minute or two ago is, my customer lost the original certificates that uh, were provided, I assume were provided when uh, the parts were ordered. Are you, are you able to resend those certificates? Yes, we are. So any of these certs, uh, like we mentioned before, they will have a specific serial number on it. So if you can, uh, we do keep that information on file here at ACI. 
So if you can tell us what the PO number was or the order number, we will be able to go back into our system, look up those original certs and send them to you as a, as a PDF or an Excel spreadsheet. So yes, we are able to refine the lost certificates. It's something that uh, happens with regularity. So the question is, uh, new sensors with certificates or recertify old sensors? Um, that's, that's up to the specific application. Um, you know, most, I shouldn't say most, all of our sensors have, you know, a, a five-year warranty. So we expect all of our products to have an extended operation period or an indefinite lifespan. Uh, so um, it's completely up to you and your application whether you want to replace existing sensors or just bring that documentation or certification uh, up to date. But uh, for the, all of our sensors, you should expect a, a, a long life um, without any, um, you know, uh, planned obsolescence or phase out of, of the sensors. Let's see what other questions did we have here? There's a question that uh, uh, the example cert does not have a recertification date, but the actual certs do. Why is there a recertification date uh, on the the certs? Yes, we do put a rec. Um, on some of the certs, we do put a recommended uh, recertification date, and that follows to the, the one-year interval that, we've, uh, that I mentioned briefly a, a little bit ago. Um, so on our, on our certs, on, I, I believe on, on most of the certs, there is a, a certification or a recertification date, and that's generally one year. And that's a, 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 gen, a, a good rule of thumb for, uh, for recalibration or, or recertification. And if you've got more specific questions, email me or reach out to your sales engineer here at ACI. We can go into some more detail about that. Another question that was emailed in uh, before the webinar is, what is a matched pair? And that's a good question. Uh, we've seen some applications in the past. More so that was uh, a, a while back, I, I saw a lot of specifications or requirements for a matched pair. And that's when two sensors are tested to match each other as closely as possible. And we've never done that because two sensors matching each other, they both could be inaccurate. We, when we certify and test our sensors, they're being tested to a known set standard. And so we would guarantee that every sensor that would leave our factory, especially anyone that's uh, uh, would provided with an NIST certificate, is going to be tested and going to be within its stated accuracy against that known standard. So we do see applications, uh, like I mentioned uh, a little bit ago with that uh, measuring water flowing in and out of a, a, a building where they want sensors to match each other perfectly to calculate uh, a differential. So those sensors might match closely, but they might not be accurate to that, that known standard. So any certificate or any sensor that we provide is going to be guaranteed to be accurate to within our stated uh, accuracy specs on our data sheets. We do use, however, the term matched in a different way. When we talk about our temperature transmitters, we mentioned that they are a TTM part number. And that's what the M stands for, matched. It, and by that, we mean we are matching the temperature sensor to the specific transmitter and then calibrating and certifying that device as one device. You can order our temperature transmitters without uh, the NIST certificates using just an A slash TT1K part number. And in those cases, they're built as two separate devices with the temperature sensor uh, separate from uh, the 4 to 20 or analog transmitter. So that's what we mean by matched in our TTM part numbers is that these new devices are um, matched together and tested and certified as one device. Are there any other questions? I don't see, I think I got all of the questions here that were submitted. Again, I will put my contact information up on the screen here and feel free at any time to reach out uh, to us. This is our mainline 800 number. So you can uh, speak to any one of the sales engineers here, any one of our tech support team are happy to help you build a part number and ensure that you're getting the appropriate documentation that you need for your application. We also have live chat available on our website. 
uh, any time that, uh, that our office is open. Thanks again for joining us. I look forward to talking with you again soon as we continue our educational webinar series. Have a great day.